In the last episode, we've learned about the average in the mode. For now, we have a great indicator for the center of our distribution and its peaks. But what about the variability? You could check the bar chart or the so-called histogram in order to get a feeling for the variability of your data. Sometimes you want to give a quick number and not a huge histogram. We could use the variance and the standard deviation in order to do so. The first thing we want to do is calculate our mean. Now all observations are either further away, near or right on the mean. The distance is what we call the deviation. Say for example you're interested in French wheat prices in August of 1890 in dollars per 100 kilogram of wheat. You might have sufficient data for the city of Marseille, Bayeux, Saint-Brieuc, Toulouse, Bordeaux, Châteauroux, Mende, Barledou, -Bar -Bar Arras, Pau, Lyon and Paris. Sorry for my French by the way. Um, this is real data. So uh, we have the cities and we have the price for 100 kilogram of wheat in dollars. Mm, if you put the data in R or Excel or whatever software you like and tell it uh, to give us the mean, so the mean is often X bar. So if you see that, that means or that is the mean. Mm, it would give us a mean of 5.941. That is the mean of the data. Now, every city has its own deviation. Paris, for example, is very far away from 5.941. Its, its price for wheat was $7.6 per 100 kilogram um, of wheat. Mm, its deviation would be 7.6 minus 5.941. And that is equal to 1.65. Nine. So the deviation of the Parisian wheat um, is $1.659 per 100 kilogram of wheat. Take another example. Toulouse. The price was $5.55 per 100 kilogram of wheat. So 5.55 5 minus 5.941. 5 now that is equal to minus O. Oh, Point three nine and one. In order to get the variance, what we do is we square the deviations. So the variance. So in order to get the variance, the first thing we do. Wait a second. Variance. So in order to get the variance, we square all of the deviations. So in or we're squaring it because if we square the deviations, we'll get rid of the uh, negative sign and we'll get a positive value or positive values. And so we square the deviations and take an average of that. So the variance is the average of the deviations squared okay so the variance is the average of the squared deviations so because we're squaring our deviations we not only get positive values also large values will become even larger that is very important we have to keep that in mind um, so what we do is we take the square root of our variance so we take the square root of our variance so the square root of our variance and this becomes our standard deviation so we're back at deviations one standard deviation so the square root of the variance is this is one standard deviation okay so what would be the standard or what would be one standard deviation of the french wheat prices we'll let the computer do the math and it tells us that one standard deviation one standard deviation is equal to uh, one standard deviation is equal to um just let me Look that up. One standard deviation is equal to 
three dollars per 100 kilogram. So our actual data has a mean of 5.941 and a standard deviation of 0.623 dollars per 100 kilogram of wheat. S what, what could happen is, just, just imagine the standard deviation wouldn't be 0.623. Just imagine the sta one standard deviation would be one standard deviation. Just imagine one standard deviation would be 0.02. So what would be the difference? Well, if the if the standard deviation so the mean is, is the same for both of them. But just imagine. In, in case number one, we have a standard deviation of 0.623, and the other in the other case, we have a standard deviation of 0.02. That would mean that our data is closely attached or closely clustered around our mean. In other words, there's no spread. So how would the data look like? Let me just draw that real quickly. So, so this might there's our our oh, that's, that's a bit too oh oops sorry. So let's draw that, okay? So here's our mean, and the data might look like this. Okay, that could be our data. So how would the data look like if our standard deviation would be 0.02? So the data is clustered around the mean. If it's clustered around the mean, so the mean is right there, it would look like this. I see. It's very, very uh, near. So every observation is near the mean. The data is not very spread out. Um, now imagine we have a standard deviation. So imagine we have one standard, one standard deviation of, let's say, two point one dollar per one hundred kilogram of wheat. Now that data would be spread out. So just look at that. So again, here's our mean. Now the data might look like this. So I, I guess you see the difference. So the smaller the standard deviation gets, the, the, the more they are clustered around the mean. The bigger the standard deviation gets, the wider the, they're spread out. Okay, so I think you get what I want to say. With a standard deviation, you could also say how far away from the mean one single data point is. Remember, the mean or the the, the mean of our um, the mean of our um, data set was five point nine four one dollars per one hundred kilogram. Now let's look at the price for Parisian wheat. The price for one hundred kilogram of Parisian wheat was $7.6 per 100 kilogram. Its deviation is $1.659 and one standard deviation of our data set is equal to $1.623 per, um, per 100 kilogram of wheat. Now, how many standard deviations with that deviations of the Parisian uh, data? How many standard deviations would that be? Well, that's pretty easy to calculate. So that would be 1.6, the, the deviation of the Parisian wheat, divided by one standard deviation. We want to know how many, it's, how many standard deviations that is. 0.623. Now that would be equal to 2.6 standard deviations away from the mean. So the Parisian wheat price is 2.6 standard deviations away from the mean. Now, this is of course highly subjective, but I would label this as an extreme value. I would say this is an extreme value or a, an outlier, so to say. In this context, um, or, or in the context of all French wheat prices, the Parisian wheat price is much higher than the, in the rest of the country.